Hey, we're going to do the handover on the Bailey 794i autograph. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to go onto the inside. Firstly, fill up point, you fill up from here, diesel into there, and that's where your ad blue goes in. Your tyre pressures and everything are just on the door sill there for you. And then you'll also find on your passenger side, your bonnet release catch. Pull that to release your bonnet. Whilst we're here as well, you can see you've got your Remis cab blinds which are fitted to this model. With this, all you've got to do, pinch, pull down, and what I find is easier is just to lead from the bottom, just to connect it in place, and they're on magnets there. And we'll connect them to place. It's the exact same ones with here across the window and on the other side. They clip into like that. Moving to the bonnet, your bonnet release catch is just in line with your Persia logo, logo just underneath here. Once your bonnet is open, the main things that you're going to need to know under here is if you're ever needing to jump start the vehicle. Uh, if that's the case, your negative goes on to here, which is just on there. And then down here you'll find another little pad down there, and that's your positive. You know that because there's a cap over the top, and it has a little positive um, uh, logo on the top of the cap. Moving across, that's the main thing, as I say, that you need to know. But just to point out some, uh, some things for you, you've got your engine oil here with your dipstick, which is just down there. Your brake disc uh, fluid, which is there. Your engine coolant your power steering fluid, and then your washer fluid, which is just there. That's everything that's underneath the bonnet. Moving around the vehicle, you can see you've got your awning and your aerial on top. Here you've got an external socket. You've got your gas locker, which is in here. And just next to that is your external gas point. Moving along finally, you've got your garage which is back here, you've also got another entrance point to this on the other side of the vehicle. You can see that you've also got your reversing camera just up at the top there. Moving on to the other side of the vehicle, you've got your hook up point which is into here. Next, you've got your toilet cassette, which is just into here. You have your water fill up point, which is on the whale system, which is just there. And above that, you've got your two fridge vents, as you can see there. Moving down here, you can see you've got a grey tap there. What that is, is for your wastewater. That's your wastewater drain down point. This here, this is a blue pipe, this is just a breather pipe. Uh, you just need to leave that as it is, as I say, that's just a breather pipe. But wastewater's down there, your fresh water drain down point and your boiler drain down point is in the vehicle and I'll show you that once we get to that, that area. Moving along, you've then got your Aldi heating uh, vent. In essence, this is the vehicle's chimney um, and the flue. Um, so again, don't hang anything on there because it does get very hot. And then finally, you've got another access point into the garage along the back. Moving into your vehicle, uh, you have your control panel. In your control panel, if I select this button, it turns the master on uh, and that activates everything. At the bottom you've got your two light options. The top one turns the lights on on the inside of the vehicle and the bottom one is your door light, which is just on the outside. Next you can see that You've got two switches here. If I flick through these, you've got your settings, you've got your fill tank level, your ba battery select. Uh, I, I always tell my customers to leave it, leave it on leisure. If you do leave it on, uh, flick that over by, um, by mistake, uh, what that's going to do is it's going to run all your, um, all your lights and everything off your vehicle battery and you don't want that uh, because obviously it could flatten it. So make sure you leave that on leisure. Uh, let me just flick through again. You then got your waste level, uh, your fresh water level, external temperature and internal temperature, and then you've also got your leisure current and voltage, which is just there for you. And you're back to the home screen. 
The final button as well, you've got your pump, which is just there. Turn that on, that'll activate the pump. Obviously, you need to make sure that, you're, um, that you've got water in the system before you do this. Once you've done that, you need to go to all your taps, including your, um, your shower point, turn them to hot and turn them on. What that's going to do is it's going to pull water through the system, priming the system and also priming the boiler system. Once it comes out steadily, it'll initially spurt. Once it's coming out steadily, you prime your system. Once you've done that for hot, flick it over to cold, do the exact same. It makes sure that you prime the, the entire system. And once you've done that, you can leave your pump on uh, because you've got isolation switches on each of your uh, taps uh, and shower point, as I say, and it'll only activate the pump when you need it. And that is your control panel. One thing to mention as well, when flicking through these, if you want to select, all you've got to do is click this enter button there. Next, moving into the kitchen area, you've got your microwave, which is just up there. Oven and grill and hob. And also your sink. Obviously, your uh, how your hob works, exact same as it does at home. Igniter switch there for your oven. And then you can feed it through. On all your windows, you can see you've got these blinds. You've got a blackout blind at the bottom and a fly screen at the top. They do clip onto each other as well like that. To release, simply push up. On all your windows, you've got these latches. That'll then allow you to uh, push the, the window out. And what we say is loosen these and then it'll allow you to push out. When, you're at a, when, it's, when you've pushed it out and you're at um, a level that you're happy with, simply tighten these into position and it'll allow it to sit at that level. You can notice you have also got venting options here. So if I put it into there, that's on venting. So it allows a little bit of airflow into the, into the van. Uh, when you're using that you also you know need to make sure that when you are traveling these are securely fastened and are not on venting next your Aldi heating system for your Aldi heating system all you got to do is press this button and it'll turn on click menu and then you'll have your options here at the top you've got your temperature and this is all touch screen so you can alter this just like so You've then got, uh, so that's the internal temperature. You've then got your water temperature, like so. And also finally your fuel. So you can either have it on electric or you can have it on gas. You can choose when you're having it on electric between one kilowatt, two kilowatt electric. So it's completely up to you. Uh, at the moment, obviously I've selected something that I haven't got, so uh, if that ever happens, so if you selected gas, for example, you've not got any gas in the, the vehicle, you'll get an error code. Um, so it'll say gas alert, not working. What you then need to do, go into your settings, scroll, scroll through, and you can reset the system, which is just there. To turn off, all you've got to do is hold, and that will turn the system off. Moving into the lounge area, just in your cupboard. At the top you've got your aerial, to use this unscrew this, push up and then tighten into place. You can then use this little arm at the bottom here to alter the tilt of the aerial um, to in essence uh, provide better connection. Over here this is how you turn the aerial on and off. You can see at the moment we've got a blue light which indicates that the, uh, that the vehicle's aerial is on. To turn on and off you've got a button up here, the left hand side see on and off there and you've also got a little dial to play around with the range as well which is just there in the opposite cupboard you can see that you've got your solar panel regulator which is just located here and obviously your point for your TV in the floor you've got a panel here which you can use for storage but beneath that you've also got as you can see another panel that contains your leisure batteries pull this up lift you can access your leisure battery which is just there finally in the lounge space just in here you have where all your um, fuses are and also your trip box which is just here if the vehicle ever trips you can come to here uh, and then look at your your manual just to um, decide which trip uh, which sorry which fuse it is uh, and as I say this is just all located here underneath the bench seat under this bench seat as well you have also got um, uh, some storage for personal items. Moving through to the back of the vehicle, um, 
Uh, you've, you can see we've got a, um, a hatch here, which is just there. Uh, contained in here is your fresh water tank. Your fresh water tank will take approximately 120 litres. Um, and to remove that fresh water, all you've got to do, unscrew the cap. Put your hand in, find where the plug is, and simply pull the plug out. And that will empty the whole system. What we say as well with your drain down points, including your fresh water and your boiler drain down point, leave them open because when you're travelling, uh, the vibrations of the road will empty all the water out on the uh, out of the tank. And it's just water, so it's not going to harm anything. You can also uh, easily give this a wash out. Moving into the bathroom area, uh, you can see we've been over your shower in, in terms of how to prime it and also your tap. But you've got your cassette toilet. This does swivel to get yourself comfy. You can see that the cassette at the moment is closed. Underneath this area you have your blade. Push away from you to open. Push towards you to close. Um, when using this, open it up to close all the... Um, uh, sorry, uh, during use. So open it up so all the waste will drop into the cassette. Flush the toilet and then simply close the blade. You'll notice to flush You've simply got this blue button here. One thing to mention as well is that uh, it'll only flush providing you've got your pump on. So make sure you've, you, you've got your pump on when you're trying to do that. Uh, you've also got a couple of lights here. So you've got a green, amber and, and red to indicate when the, uh, the, the, the vehicle's cassette is full. At the moment we've got some water in it just testing for its seal, hence why we have a red light. Next you have your fridge. You can see that you've got a brand new Dometic fridge in this which will open from both sides. So you can access it from here and also this side here. To operate the fridge, your fridge is a three-way system. To operate that, tap this, that'll turn the fridge on. As you can see, you've got your, uh, your fridge temperature here, and then you've got also underneath it how you're going to fuel the fridge. At the moment, I've got it on auto, selecting gas by default. Um, to change that, all you've got to do Use the dial to select between which function you want. As you can see, temperature, you can alter it like that, like so. Click to activate. For the fuel, cl click to activate. As I say, you've got it on auto, so whichever fuel it's got, it'll automatically um, provide. You've got gas, which is the flame. Your uh, your, main, uh, your mains, which is the uh, the hookup cable, and then you've also got uh, 12 volt, which is your uh, leisure battery there, and that'll only work when you're travelling. Uh, if for whatever happen, uh, w whatever reason, uh, the auto function is switched off, and you select a fuel that you've not got, you'll get an error code. Uh, within that, you then just need to switch it back to your um, a fuel that you have got. Once you've selected that, just click that to select it. Finally, you've got your fridge battery, your fan, along with your uh, your various options there in your settings panel. As I say, turn on, you can change the brightness and things like that. Click to, se to select. Moving into the bedroom area, you can see that you've got another panel just in the floor here. here. This is for your wastewater. This is so you can clean it. All you do, unscrew the cap, and as I say, you can clean it through. Finally, moving round to the back, you can see you've got your Alder heating system. This is the boiler unit for it. As I say, you've got three main drain down points. You've got your fresh water, which is located in the vehicle. You've got your waste water, which you can drain from the outside of the vehicle. And finally, you have your Alder heating system, which is your uh, your boiler point, as I say. And you can drain that from the inside. The main thing that you all, that you need to know here is that your little yellow toggle there. At the moment it's closed, in the down position it's closed, flick that up and that'll be in the open position and will drain down the system. You need to do this when you're, remo when you're moving off site each time, because uh, you don't want frozen water in your system. That is just hidden by a panel which is just there, you have another one on the other side which is used for storage. Finally in your, uh, in your rear wardrobe area you can see that you've got your tank, this is for your Alder heating system. Uh, and this is for your glycol solution, which is in essence an anti-freeze solution for your water heating. Uh, you don't need to do anything with this, and as I say, this is in the uh, is, is in the back wardrobe. 
That concludes the handover on the Bailey 794i.